Hello everyone and welcome back to the next episode of Journey to Mortal Kombat 11. Last time we took a look at the possible guest characters that might be included as DLC in MK11. So go check that out if you haven't already. And sorry this took so long, I have been having some troubles at home and haven't been able to record all the way up until now so I hope you can understand. And for this episode I will be talking about what the story might be for the campaign of the game because this ultimately is going to determine which characters will be in the main roster. Now I just want to say right now that none of this is set in stone and there is no possible way I can accurately predict the story for Mortal Kombat 11. But what I can do is give thoughts and ideas for what could happen in the story mode whether it be ideas for chapters or what the overall story could be. And for those of you who think story Story modes in fighting games are pointless, please leave now as there are people who enjoy having a bit more content in their games and story modes that flesh out the characters and are actually a lot of fun if done well. So with that, let us begin. So to recap, MK9 was a reboot of Mortal Kombat 1 through Mortal Kombat 3 all in one game and MKX was just Mortal Kombat 4. So next in the order of games would be Deadly Alliance. But seeing that both Shang Tsung and Quan Chi are dead, even though Shang Tsung might be returning, it'd be hard to do the Deadly Alliance storyline. They could make the Revenant, Luke Kang, and Katana the new Deadly Alliance as NRS is completely remaking the storyline. So there are a few possibilities. They could just do the Deadly Alliance storyline. They could just do the Deception storyline. Or they could combine the two, sort of what they did with the MK9 reboot, and have the two storylines taking place one after the other, or have them taking place at the exact same time. So what I think will happen is that they will combine the Deadly Alliance storyline with Deceptions, where the Dragon King Onaga is introduced and have multiple things going on at once. But for this, I'm going to mostly give ideas for what they could do with Onaga, since I don't have many ideas of what they could do for a Deadly Alliance storyline, because we don't know who said Deadly Alliance could be outside of Revenant, Liu Kang, and Katana, unless they make brand new characters to be the Deadly Alliance, which is another possibility. Anyways, following in tradition with MK9 and MKX of having Johnny Cage be Chapter 1 in the storyline, and MK11 having Johnny Cage going to stop the Red Dragon from helping Goro get to the last Dragon Egg would be neat. This could be explained how Johnny knows about this egg and everything through another comic series, or he could give an explanation through a few short lines of exposition that he got a tip from Kano after he was captured in MKX by Sonya Blade about the Red Dragon helping Goro find a really powerful item. Or he could be on a stealth mission that goes horribly wrong. In the first chapter for Johnny Cage, he gets into three or four fights and he wins them of course. And at the end of the chapter, you get to see Goro being turned into Onaga with Dagon beside him. And you end up fighting Onaga in the very first chapter. You get his first health bar down with no problems. And as you are draining down his second health bar, when there is roughly 50% of Onaga's health left, Onaga goes into an instant cinematic cutscene and beats Johnny Cage to death. Technically, you would have passed that part of the story, but this would show that Johnny Cage is not strong enough to defeat Onaga on his own. As this was a problem in MKX where everyone's power levels were all over the place. Because I can believe that the young special forces team can be taken down by the Lin Kuei and Sub-Zero, but then can go and take on Liu Kang, Sindel, Katana, Kun Lao, and Anenra slash Smoke and survive. Complete bullshit! Showing Johnny Cage being taken down by the Dragon King shows, yes, this guy means business and can't be taken down just by one person. Remember in Deception, Shujinko actually helped Onaga get all the Kamidogu, and then you can only get the canon ending by playing Shujinko's ladder. And in that ending, it took Shujinko absorbing all the other fighters' energy after Ermac helped free the souls of everyone under Onaga's control just to defeat Onaga. And even then, Shujinko didn't even defeat Onaga since Nightwolf had to come in and banish Onaga's soul into the Nether Realm temporarily. So, thanks, Shujinko, you sure did nothing. And in killing a Mortal Kombat staple in the very first chapter, it would tell the player Onaga, again, isn't messing around. And before you complain about seeing Johnny Cage die in the first chapter, Onaga could bring him back to life and then have him fight in his army. 
That way, later in the story, we can have a fight between Cassie and Johnny in her own chapter. Onaga could bring back to life many of the other fighters that are dead and that are not already revenants. So sorry, Liu Kang, Katana, Kung Lao, and etc. But this would be a good way to bring back someone like, I don't know, Melina. With Onaga seeing her fighting potential and wanting her on his side. Another idea for a chapter would be a team up between the Lin Kuei and the Shirai Ryu, Sub-Zero and Scorpion's clans. Instead of having us play as Sub-Zero or Scorpion, they have the team up of Takeda Takahashi and Frost. In Injustice 2, it had chapters where you had two fighters and you got to pick one for each fight, like Batman or Superman versus Dr. Fate. This, so this would be a good way for two clans to team up without having the two poster boys teaming up. They could be doing a stealth mission against the Red Dragon to get some information about Onaga. And another idea for the same chapter would be Frost trying to kill Takeda in the final fight, saying that she thinks Sub-Zero is getting soft for teaming up with one of the Lin Kuei's enemies. Then you pick a fighter, you fight the other, and then some Something happens because of it. And there could be other team ups too, like Dark Raiden and Fujin, Scorpion and Sub Zero, Kotokan and someone, maybe Ermac if he's in the game. And throughout the campaign, there would be a total of two or three run ins with Onaga, that is, including the one in Chapter 1. And each time you go up against him, and when he is on his second health bar, and is around 30 to 10% health left, he goes into a custom cinematic cutscene, beating that fighter down, still showing that they are not enough to defeat him alone. Now, he could either kill this fighter and resurrect them and bring them into his army, or they could be saved at the very last second and retreat. That way, not everyone is dying to Onaga when he shows up. And on a side note, I'd be completely okay with Devora being an MK11 if she went and teamed up with Onaga and just repeatedly failed him. Like, you as the player character beats Devora like three or four or five times and Onaga just gets sick of it and brutally murders her and just throws her soul into one of the random soldiers in his immortal army and then doesn't resurrect her. <sighs> Fuck Devora. Okay, now, this is something I personally would like to see in MK11. I 100% doubt NRS will ever do this, but I would love for this to happen for the final chapter of Mortal Kombat 11. So everyone hear me out and give me your thoughts on this idea after hearing me out. Have the final chapter of Mortal Kombat 11 be called Verse Onaga. Instead of being called someone's name saying that it's a specific character for that specific chapter. Have a large amount of characters, let's say Sub-Zero and Scorpion, Raiden and Fujin, the four Special Forces members, the Deadly Alliance of Liu Kang and Katana, and Kotokan and someone, maybe Noob Saibot, all put their differences aside and team up. They see that Onaga is being the bigger threat, and maybe they all had a run-in with him, and nobody could defeat him on their own. They all run into Onaga's throne room with the Soul Nato and his immortal army, and they attack. In the background of the fighting stage, there can be ninja, Shaolin monks, and whatever forces each side controls fighting against the immortal army. What they could do is first have the special forces members, Cassie Cage, Jacqueline Briggs, Takeya Takahashi, and Kun Jin, attack Onaga, and then you pick one of the four of them to use to fight Onaga. After you pick, he blows everyone away, and the one you pick either gets up or withstands the pushback. You fight, and when he gets to his second health bar, and it gets down to 50%, Instant cutscene and he beats the fighter down that you picked. Before they are about to be killed or when slash if Onaga tosses them away, Kotokan and whoever he is with, maybe Melina if Ermac is still in the game and he releases the souls from Onaga's control like he did in Deception, jumps in and you pick a fighter and you do it again. This time you get the second health bar down to 40% and when it gets down Onaga throws them off. Then they can do the same thing for Scorpion and Sub-Zero, getting him down to 30% before getting tossed off and then again for Liu Kang and Katana, getting him down to 20% before being tossed away. And finally Dark Raiden and Fujin go up against him. Two gods! and you get him to a second health bar, and just when you think you gotta fight him one more time, you finally get his health bar to zero and beat the game, beating the campaign, big cinematic finish with everyone attacking and defeating Onaga. Then you win! Please go hack 100,000 combat coins. Game over! This way, Onaga will have been shown to fight five fighters all in a row without stopping, and he is being overwhelmed and slowly weakened down while trying to keep his immortal army alive in the background to take care of all the grunts that came with the fighters until he is finally defeated by one of the gods. 
it shows that he wasn't someone that could get his ass kicked by a special forces member who got plot armor at the end of the game. And for being the campaign, you should get Onaga as a playable character, minus all of his BS boss moves. And NRS doesn't need to tell us if he is going to be playable or not. It can be a huge surprise to actually get people to play the story mode. I hope they have Onaga in this game and make him a playable character after beating him. Or NRS could make the player do all the alternate decisions between which fighters they need to choose for all the fights and 100% the campaign before playing as Onaga. That would be another thing I'd be okay with. This is just a idea I personally would like to see in Mortal Kombat 11's campaign if they end up bringing Onaga in. The past boss fights, at least in the story mode, were such BS. Again, look at Cassie Cage vs Final Form Shinnok for the best example. And I would love to see the big bad guy shown to be as strong as he should be, and that he just isn't some pushover because of some plot armor. And those are some of the ideas, and one big idea I would really like to see NRS do for Mortal Kombat 11's campaign. I wish I could go into more detail, but the game is not even announced yet, so I can't really talk much about it, and all I can do is speculate. But in the end, if they do this, make the big boss at the end playable. I would like to hear your guys' thoughts on some of my ideas for the campaign of the game. Also, please share your own ideas for the campaign down in the comments below. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell for more and share this video as that helps the channel grow. Follow me on Twitter at MikeCombat for updates on future videos. And next time on Journey to Mortal Kombat 11, I will talk about the characters who might not be in Mortal Kombat 11's roster or even in the game at all. Until next time.